Hey YouTube, Striker5570 here, and here's another update on my printer quality. And as you can see, this is quite a large part I got right here, and I have another part going as we speak. But uh, you can probably already tell what this is. Um, this is a lower part to uh, Tomas Bengotter's Daft Punk helmet. He's the taller one with the silver helmet. Uh, this one isn't exactly the scale, I just found it on Thingiverse, um, it's just for a Halloween uh, costume I'm going to put together. Um, but this print took about five and a half hours, give or take, because um, uh, I wasn't here watching it. But um, it turned out pretty nice. Uh, the uh, the layer stacking is, is, is alright, it has some inconsistencies in it. But I believe that is because I turned up the voltage, and the reason I turned up the, and when I talk about voltage, I mean on the on the uh, stepper drivers, um, because I had started this print um, several times, and this was the first time I tried it, and it just stopped after uh, I think this is like the 15th layer or something like that, um, which had a lower voltage. But you can see, I don't know how well this will focus on here. The layer stacking in here is much better. It's extremely smooth. So, um, but it would stop printing. I mean, not stop printing, but the uh, the layers would it would start shifting over and start losing steps. Uh, so that was not good. So I would take finishing the print over a little bit of quality um, any day. But for this print, I turned them back just a tad. Uh, to turn the voltage back just a tad on both the X and the Y because it's core X, Y, um, you have to adjust both accordingly and get them about the same. I don't have a multimeter, which I probably should invest in, uh, just so I can get an accurate reading on those. But, with that being said, just look at the quality on this. It is pretty darn smooth on those curved surfaces that I was having so much pro problems with. So, it might be the voltage issue right there. Just a little bit of bubble right there just because the inside was all bridged. Um, the part printed like this. Um, so yeah, this was all bridged and it did an excellent job actually printing that. And uh, printing these, this was with zero support. I did a really good job printing inside here. Not sure how well you can see that on the black filament. But yeah, it's a little rough, but you'll never see that on the inside. Um, so, just like a teeny little bit of bubbles here and there. Um, that part was on the other side of the fan, so that's probably because I don't have two fans going. Um, but I hope to soon, oops, upgrade the uh, fan system, uh, get some larger fans here, and hopefully the quality will improve even more. Um, another thing here, you can probably notice a little bit of rippling in here. It is pretty minor. The light picks it up more than it actually is there, but it is there. Um, so, I'm trying to figure out how I can uh, fix that. There we go. I got that to focus. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this, uh, with this helmet so far. And uh, I will let you know when the uh, next part is done. And uh, right here you can see the completed print and it turned out pretty well actually. This was the largest print, um, printed it in three pieces uh, with an overall print time of about 18 hours. So not too, not too shabby. Uh, it was printed at um, 75 to 85 millimeters a second for the whole thing. Uh, the only thing is I got some of these ridges up at the top here, but I believe that was a slicing issue slash cooling issue. 
um, but those will sand off and it won't be a big deal. But the rest of it printed pretty nicely. I'm pretty pleased with it. There's a little bit of like a um, bulging right there, or just again from the print. Um, also in the back, I've covered it up, but um, it didn't really adhere quite well in the back right here. I don't know if I put hairspray down uh, thick enough, so I'm covering that up um, because I'm getting ready to fiberglass the inside of this helmet. Um, you can sort of see there um, where you can see the blue tape. Um, the inside uh, is very steep uh, overhang that I had to do, but you know it turned out not too bad it's completely solid um, but I am getting ready to fiberglass it and I figured I'd make a quick video um, so I taped off all the open areas um, on the helmet which is uh, the mouth uh, the eye the uh, well the visor and uh, this little um, imperfection in the back which I will putty after I fiberglass it so uh, next step is to mix up some fiberglass all right, I'm outside here, and I just finished putting all the fiberglass in the helmet. Uh, I didn't do any pre-op video or whatnot, but I can explain what I did. I cut some fiberglass cloth into roughly three inch by three inch uh, squares and rectangles and whatnot. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, actually having a little bit of varying sizes uh, can be good, because if you need a slightly bigger piece, uh, or a smaller piece, you have it. Um, but basically what I did, I put it mostly in the top, didn't really put any in the front, um, because putting it up here is not really needed, because this is one piece, um, and that would kind of make the helmet a little front heavy. Uh, so, uh, but I did put it up here where the two halves join up, uh, just for strength, and I, you see it pretty much goes all the way inside, up around in the ear pieces and everything. So, it's uh, looking pretty good. Um, some things you will need to do this are, of course, fiberglass resin. Uh, and make sure you have enough um, hardener. Uh, I just barely had enough to do what I just did here. Um, I used a little straw to mix up the uh, resin and hardener. I used uh, one of these disposable paint brushes to apply. Uh, some rubber gloves uh, so you don't get the resin on your hands and a uh, respirator because the stuff smells nasty and yeah that's pretty much it um, I will uh, show you a post-op uh, how the helmet fits and everything and um, next thing I'll be adding is uh, the lens and the lights on it so Stay tuned. Here's the next uh, iteration. Um, I have put foam on the inside here. And also I have just took a little Bondo spot putty and uh, filled in this back part here. So we'll just sand it down a little bit of the rough spots. I'm not going to actually paint this, but I put a little bit of acrylic paint just to cover it up. But I'm not really concerned about the finish so long as it's dark. Um, you see there's a little bit of paint here because so I filled in a crack. Um, um, but as long as it's all a black color, I'm not too concerned about it matching all um, of the black colors. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is be putting in the EL wire. And I have put holes where I wanted the, the wire to come in and out of the helmet. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to start this and then I will show you the finished product. Alright, so uh, for the EL wire um, we're going to want to uh, take the end of it here and you want to start with this end and you want to be aware of where your starting point is uh, because you can only thread one end in um, because the other half has this big uh, piece on it that's thicker than the rest of the wire because um, this connects to the uh, transformer. So you want to try and thread everything in a continuous fashion. So as you see I have two holes here because I want it to come out here around the earpiece and then back in. 
Um, so I have these two holes close together so it'll look like it's a continuous circle. So you want to go inside here. And then I've drilled the holes. They're sort of behind the foam a little bit. It's a little hard for you to maybe see. But I found the hole. There we go. And I have it coming out of the uh, right hole there. And then you pretty much just thread that all the way through. Now I have 15 feet of it here, so this should be plenty for the helmet. Um, that's just the length that I purchased. However, you can buy it longer or shorter. I'm not exactly sure the properties of it and how, uh, uh, like the resistivities and all that stuff. Uh, so I'm not sure if 15 feet is as long as you can go uh, without it dimming. Um, so, anyways, I'm gonna take that um, and bring that as far as far in as I can. Um, and now I will have the uh, transformer in my pocket somehow, so I probably will have this wire come down the back of the helmet. So I want I want enough to where I can connect an extension wire and have it come down the back of my shirt. So it's something like that. Um, and having it lay on the inside like that. Um, and if you've never seen uh, EO wire before, um, let me just uh, plug in the uh, transformer. And basically what the transformer is, if you do not know, uh, it converts DC power to AC power. Sorry about that, camera cut out. Um, uh, the transformer converts DC power to AC power, and um, that is what runs this EL wire here. So it does make a humming noise, a high-pitched hum noise, um, but the wire is not too bright. Um, it's kind of bright in my room right now, uh, so uh, but that's pretty much what it does. So. So here is a quick update on the uh, EL wire progress. Uh, so you can see I've drilled the holes right there. And that's going to come across the top part of the visor. It's right there. And I'm going to be coming through on the inside. I have two holes drilled there and there and there. So that will come around the front. And then that should be done, but overall it's looking pretty cool. Um, I'm using my drill press here to uh, drill the holes. Just holding the helmet and uh, pushing it into it. Uh, just because I don't have a uh, hand drill. But uh, it would probably be a little easier with a hand drill. But so far it's worked, worked alright. Uh, just for clarification, these holes are the pretty much uh, the exact size of the wire. I'm not sure the size of the wire. Um, I uh, don't have my calipers with me, um, but it looks to be about two millimeters. Uh, so, but yeah, um, I'm attaching all of the wire with super glue. Uh, you can kind of see the super glue; it leaves a little white mark. So you can always come back with a little bit of a uh, little bit of paint. Just cover that up, no problem, uh, because like I said before, like matching blacks doesn't really matter. It's all going to be in the dark. No one's going to see it. Uh, so, yep, uh, I will uh, update you when I get all the wire on. Okay, I just want to demonstrate how I'm uh, putting the wire down here. Uh, so, uh, like you just saw, I have the hole here and a hole up here, and I've threaded the wire through it uh, from the inside and then coming out. So you want to move it out of the way first. Let me see if I can, there you go. Now you're going to want to take your super glue, and you're just going to want to dab it. I need it to come out here. So you're going to want to dab a little bit of glue here. A little much, about every inch or so. So you can see that up here. Okay. 
And you don't want to go all the way to the end uh, where you want to, right before the hole, where before the wire goes back in, you don't want to put glue there just yet. So you're going to take the wire and pulling it, sorry I'm a little out of view here, it's a little difficult behind the camera, but uh, you want to pull it taut and then press down with your thumb, making sure to center it uh, on the ridge right here. Of course it depends on like exactly your application, but keeping it tight and then pressing. And that ensures you get a nice, straight, even line. All right, and now that we're at the last, last little ring right here, you want to come in on the inside of the helmet. You're going to want to pull. Right, and you see we have a little bit sticking out right there. So what we are going to do is put a teeny dab right under it as close to the hole as we can. Just like that. And then uh, coming towards, going towards the hole, you want to press, press into the hole like that. And then the super glue should stick and it should be a nice, nice sharp corner. So, hope I can focus in on that. So, it gives us a nice corner that butts up nicely to the other wire. So, that is that so far. Now, we'll just continue that process throughout the rest of the helmet and, uh, you should get pretty desirable results. All right, um, this is about four months after the fact. Um, I realized I had never actually finished this tutorial. And um, so here's actually the finished helmet. Um, and here's the suit, at least the top part of the suit that I uh, made to go with it. Um, so uh, I'll just go over the suit real fast. Uh, it's just attached with fishing wire, and I just stitched it all along in this simple sort of pattern here. Um, so it goes down the sleeve and whatnot, and then it plugs in down here, and you can stick that in your pocket. And then there's a bit of extra here, and I just shoved that in my pocket um, and whatnot. This, was, this took the whole 15-foot spool, or the amount of wire you get, you, didn't, you get it in 15-foot rolls. <clears throat> So uh, here's the helmet, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, um, and uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. It um, it uh, served me pretty well, um, wore it to a few Halloween parties, and um, right here I have the extra wire just wrapped up in here, um, I have the rest of the foam put in here, and the visor. Uh, the visor um, is... Um, all it is is um, I took a, a binder divider that was clear, almost like a, um, a transparency for an overhead. Um, I don't know if anyone went to school back then, but they had uh, it's like a clear plastic sheet. Um, at first I tried to dye it, but it, it wouldn't accept any dye. They're made not to absorb color, so you can wash them off. But um, those are really expensive, actually. So I... Uh, found a binder divider at Office Depot and it was like three or four bucks for a pack of ten. All I needed was one of them. Cut out the shape of the visor and then um, I used automotive tint um, which is actually more expensive than the uh, than the binder dividers themselves and I only needed a little strip so I have a bunch of auto glass tint um, that I won't um, really be needing for a while. Um, also, the tint I used is really, really dark. I should have gone much lighter. This is 10%, um, I believe, 10% uh, 
auto glass tent, which lets only 10% of light in. So I don't know if I can get you a good picture here, but it's a, uh, let's see from out here, it lets in not a lot of light. So, I mean, since the EL wire, you can only really see it when it's pretty, pretty dim. Um, you're obviously gonna be wearing it in a dim environment. I couldn't see, I couldn't see anything with this on. So just, uh, just be careful um, with what kind of tint you get. Um, I could probably get it on with like 50% tint or something like that. And I would have been much, much better, much more coordinated. Uh, but, um, yeah, I can just show you real quick what it, uh, what it looks like. I'll turn that on for you. Turn this light off here. And, uh, yeah, I think it looks really, really cool. Um, I sort of tried to mimic the uh, Daft Punk helmet from their Alive 2007 tour uh, where they debuted these um, helmets uh, at their concert. Um, yeah, I know it's not quite an accurate helmet, but it was one I found on Thingiverse, and uh, I think it no one would be the wiser. So. Alright, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I will uh, catch you next time.